Okay, so here we are, we're starting to print. And we'll go get the working on it. Uh, first, we're going to concentrate on moving the tiny constraint to the camera view and getting it back to move within the camera view. So, this is one of the things we're seeing. So, um, what we've done is we've deleted the original background value and we've imported the uh, values. There is a scan layer. Uh, we're going to go one and there we go to two. The uh, foreground layer, which is the border, should be number three. And then our sprites should be number four to make sure that they're in front. So, whatever the highest number is, they're going to push to front. So, I've added an edge collider to. Um, Foreground here, so I'm going to move that quite crudely. Should spend more time. Make it all beautiful. I don't want too many dramatic changes in elevation, or I may not be able to move my tank without giving it a very significant velocity, which I did not want to do. Now, the nice thing about this is if I decide to change the scale of my level, which I will, the edge collider will scale with the um, sprite. So, um, select scale and make this longer and point it on the back. What's it wants to do with the fact that it won't make it longer at all? So, uh, let's move it over to our starting point, which will be. And we are going to put a script onto this. Now, what we're going to do is, um, so we'll create a new script. We'll do that script, and then we'll call it PG. Move. Now, we only need one script because we can have a variable in that script, and that variable will be. Um, the rate at which it moves, and we can have a different variable on each script, and therefore um, use the one script to a different variable. Um, hopefully, this will open one of them. So let's have a look at our player movement script here. Now, I have done something else. Uh, I have I have a camera control script, and in that there is a transform maximization plus vector two right time speed. So I was moving the camera, and um, I do not want to do that anymore. So I do not want the camera to move. The camera is going to be static. Now the tank, on the other hand, is going to move. So the tank is going to change position. When I press the right arrow key, it's going to move to the right at that speed, and the left arrow key is going to move at negative that speed, and the other direction. Now I need to figure out its um, Maximum x will be that number that unity. But we're going to borrow this piece of code here. Control C that. And we go here, put it in place. Control V. And we go back here. And I'm going to log my speed. Control C. And Control V. And we'll get rid of start. So, what does this do? This changes the position of our background to the right and actually we want it to the left so we'll give it a minus speed times speed times time delta time so let's we'll say time and we'll convert it we'll go back into unity we will take our background move script and we will drop it onto this equation which is our and so there's the script there, and it's got a speed of 2, so it's plus 1. Now, when it plays, now if it goes too quickly, we can just change the speed here. So we can see my tank at a rigid body, and it can move over. 
that's moving a little bit too quickly for me, so I'm going to change it to speed. One. Now I have no, and we can put it back in. So, and let's turn on the sprite render for that. Now, this doesn't need any creation. Same script on there. Now, if you remember what we talked about in class, the thing with parallax items in the foreground move faster than items in the background. So I'm going to put this at a movement of 0.7. So it's moving, oops, not 7. So 0.7. Now it's not letting me do that, so let's go see why that is. And that's because I've got speed here as a integer. So I could declare it as a float. Which I probably should do. Uh, D float and then declare it as 2.0. I could have removed the float there and it's put 2.0. Let's save that. So we go back into Unity. And now I can type in 0.7. Can I? No, maybe I can't. I'm going to remove that component before the machine melts. And, uh, I should be even slower, so I'm going to apply. So now when we press play, the foreground should move slightly faster than the background, which is moving slightly faster than the sky. Let me put this in this. So that's our first task completed, which is to get, obviously we don't want to drop off the edge of our world, which we're going to do now, but to get the background and the sky, etc. to a different speeds relative to each other. And obviously they're just PNG files plotting in the version. Okay, so we'll just stop at that point and move on to our next stage.